This is Twit. There's some interesting things. I think the big one is uh, uh, iOS 8 and the health book leak. It, does, it, it, do we credit Mark Gurman uh, with this? Where did this leak yes. come from? That's all Gurman all the time. All Gurman all the time. I love Mark. Writes for 9 to 5 Mac. And uh, Renee, you probably know the kind of like the source for this information. Is this a beta version of iOS 8 that he's looking at? I don't know if beta is the right word. We'll get the beta at WW. If Apple holds to pattern, we'll get the beta at WWC twenty WWC twenty thirteen. But it's it's better to think of iOS like a continuum. Wait a minute. Okay, let's let's fix that. Twenty fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We are now in a new year. Ah, it's so hard. <laughs> uh, so. Whenever Apple does a new version of iOS, there are features that are pushed down from the executives like Phil Schiller, and there are features that are pulled up from the engineers. Everyone can put their stuff in a big pile, and then Craig Federici goes through and sorts them and puts them into what they have time and effort to put behind. And they'll start working on that kind of thing. And if they get it ready in time for iOS 8, it goes into iOS 8. Got and it. if for some reason it's not ready or politically it's not something they want to do, then it's either held off for the future. So, for example, things like inter-app communication have started to get bundled in two years ago, but they haven't surfaced yet. The app downloads that we got this year were being worked on previous to last year, but they weren't you know, put out until this year. So it's hard to always tell, and Mark does a really good job of saying that in the article, that this is what Apple is currently working on, and that's what some developers there are working on. And if they get it finished, there's probably a good likelihood we'll see it in iOS 8. So... These screenshots, I mean, I don't think these are faked. Um, of Those are their mock-ups based on what they heard of the app. Oh, okay, this is really important. So this is not a screenshot. This it's not, it, yeah, someone told him what it looks like, and then in, sometimes you have to, in order to protect a source or because it's low yeah. quality or because there's, ver there's very easy ways to indicate where it came from, you get information and then you mock it up based on what you're told. As detailed uh, in the images throughout this article, which are complete recreations of screenshots. So they are screenshots recreated to hide the, uh, the source, I guess. Yeah, or to get good quality versions. Right. HealthBook's user interface uh, looks a lot like Passbook, but of course with different information. So let's take a look at what... Now, I admit to, you know, kind of overextending what this all means. I mean, it, this, this doesn't mean that Apple is going to have a device that tracks hydration, oxygen saturation, and blood sugar. Those things are hard to do. Yeah. Now. And also, I think <laughs> that... I'm sorry, go ahead, Renee. No, no, I was just going to say they're hard to do now. Yeah, but 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 also the the fact that they went for the passbook model, realized that uh, uh, everything that we use in passbook today, they're not features and sources that Apple actually creates as used as a way so the third parties can put something in that nice little organizer. So I think that also that does point to Apple having a phone that does a few things, but relying on outside sources to create their own blood glucose meter or their own blood pressure sensor or their own hydration sensor uh, as a way to they can simply contribute to this one central uh, clearinghouse app. That makes sense. And it's like uh, Microsoft's health uh, database or Google's, you know, late lamented health database. You have lots of fields doesn't mean you're actually generating that information. Um, there is one thing that I think is significant that I think Apple is going to do, and I hope they do. The very first card is an emergency card, and I'd love to see how this is implemented. But there is, you know, there are third-party apps that you could store your emergency information in. I'm allergic to uh, penicillin, for instance, or uh, you know, I'm on certain medications. Mm -hmm. um, it would be great if first responders would have a way to access an Apple standard emergency card as soon as they see an iPhone. Say, ah, yeah. quick. Particularly if it's, in the, if it's on the lock screen. And also, there's it's, it's something really, it's, this isn't something that couldn't be done on Android or Windows phone. But if you put it on an iPhone, first responders know how to, they, they're familiar with iPhone. They know exactly how to unlock these things. It's not going to be a mystery the way that like a lock screen app would be on an Android device. Right, right. And the one thing is interesting is they are using the Passbook model. When Passbook was introduced, uh, it was exactly what Andy said it was, and it, it still is in many ways, but they had PassKit below it that kind of abstracted everything away so that it would be very easy in the future to add mobile payments or to add, you know, contact-based payments. And if HealthBook has a health kit underlying it, which, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it might be, then as Apple provides more first-party services or as the third-party services grow, it's very easy to start just adding those in to an interface that people have already gotten used to through whatever first-generation products products that comes on.